Hello, and that is right, it's time for another update on the Zimmer Cube Kickstarter NAS that we've been talking about here on the channel for quite a while. Um, a few little updates in today's video. My most recent video was our teardown. We took the whole device apart. I will address something I was talking about in that video very, very quickly when people were requesting a lot of the noise testing, a lot of the power uh, testing and the performance benchmarks. And hopefully this video will explain a little bit better why a lot of those tests are not being performed until a more fully realized version of this device arrives but in brief the TLDR it simply is that the operating system this arrived with and later on in this video we will be looking at the dedicated OS that is intended for this down the line Zimmer OS is still nowhere near what I believe to be over the finish line I still feel it feels like Casa OS plus right now and therefore benchmarking it under that software is just simply not going to be right yes I could lump on Unraid yes I could lump on TrueNAS but that wouldn't really be fair to what people are going to be buying this if they're buying a combined hardware software solution to just sort of cop out and then use a third party one. Uh, but this video is going to be several things. It's going to be overviewing that new uh, Zimmer OS, what I liked, some of the things that I think could be improved upon. I'm also going to be talking about a new motherboard upgrade uh, in this video. I'm also going to be doing some noise testing, but I will say straight away, the noise testing is going to be general system uh, powering on and just the system in operation for a few minutes. But what I will say is I'm leaving that to the end of the video because if you're not interested in that it's basically three plus minutes of just staring at a box being powered on with no one talking so if you've come for the sound testing go to the top of the uh, the bottom of the screen go to that chapter shoot on down there but for the rest of you thanks for sticking around so uh, following up that last video the hardware design of this has seen a new mobo and i have installed it inside the device already so this is the same device we had earlier uh, and i went ahead and installed it now to put it into a bit of perspective there will be closer images much closer on screen here is the old pcb here that was inside that system as you can see there is the uh, um, the SSD that the system arrived with, that 980 Samsung as well there. We've not gone with that. We've put a new one in with a different OS so we can compare later on. But that was the old MOBO they were going for. Um, just to save people pointing in the comments, you can't buy these MOBOs. They are built in-house by them or at least modified on pre-existing ITXs. And when we got that one out, it was very, very clear early doors the main differences between these, but we'll be going through them. So there's that new MOBO, definitely a massive color difference there, not that many people care about that, but it's still quite cool uh, to go straight into a completely unique one with so many generic, arguably cheaper MOBOs flocking around with the green PCBs. Um, so aside from that obvious color change, there has been a lot of um, re sort of rejigging, maybe, of the layout, a lot of the uh, components on the PCB here inside. I will say some of the improvements I would go through straight away, probably the biggest one for me, is that additional PCIe slot, even though, because remember this is the N100 model, this isn't the i5, the N100 model has managed to squeeze in in second PCIe slot there. So we've got that full length one and now we've got a secondary smaller one, which allows us to better take advantage of those two PCIe slots there on the rear. Again, I may be wrong, I'll double check this afterwards, but I think we've even seen an integration of a brand new AS Media component chip in there in order to afford the additional PCIe capabilities there in terms of lanes. Um, another improvement I would uh, noticed as well, we've got an additional SATA port included and now a USB port included. I'm sorry if you can hear a NAS in the background running RAID scrubbing in the background. I didn't realise that was going to kick in and there's not much I can do about it, so I apologise for any uh, system noise in the background. But yeah, an additional SATA port there. It's not using it, but it's nice to know we can lump in an additional 2.5 SATA if we wanted to inside there. And most of the main F uh, panel uh, connectors still exist in there to maybe adapt and create modifications inside. They've not removed those from what I could see for the most part. And that additional USB port, for those that are looking at getting US, um, um, Unraid on this, that's going to be very desirable to use that USB port internally to you know load and effectively run Unraid inside this system here for us um, now uh, the other major 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 difference inside this and it's going to take a while to explain is down here with the connector we talked about it before right at the bottom there if you can just make it out behind the PCIe's um, that is our EDP connector that connects pretty much all of that baseline storage there at the bottom all of our hard drives all of our SSDs there that is what connects all of these. I really don't like that front panel. Um, that is what connects all of our storage here 
alongside those M2 NVMEs into that main board. That is genuinely the only connector that connects all of that up. They've upgraded that um, to a higher bandwidth cable internally. It was very hard to show, um, but even the cable itself is a higher quality cable, less flimsy. And again, maybe we'll keep this in the background or use this in a giveaway or something, this board. Um, but the enhanced bandwidth card there being utilized, a better arrangement of chips on the PCB there, the USB, the extra SATA port internally there, and of course, my personal favorite, the addition of the extra PCIe are all welcome upgrades for this and just shows a product in development that even though they clearly had this prototype good to go when they started that crowdfunding, they've not taken their foot off the gas there. And it'll be interesting to see how much of this board gets realized in the i5 model or how much of this is going to be scaled up or improved upon in that revision when it comes. But for now, let's hop over to the laptop and take a good look at um, Zimmer OS and how that runs, even though it is in beta, TNC aside, um, I still think it's going to be interesting to see how the system runs it. So heading into the new Zimmer OS beta, I will say that although it is different to that of Casa OS, the differences between it and Casa OS are actually a little bit more um, background rather than foreground. And if you're already familiar with Casa OS, a lot of the intrinsic differences for this uh, improved version of their software running on this more powerful system than the Zimmer board and Zimmer Blade may not be immediately noticeable. If you head over to GitHub where you can download uh, the uh, beta for this software, I will say they do outline some of those differences, but at the same time some of the main core upgrades that i'm looking forward to seeing aren't actually included yet and they are farther down a roadmap on this software development so for example all of the file sharing the widgets and the gui largely remain the same if we log in there i'll show you what i mean maybe i'll actually type the password in correctly um you can see the gui is pretty much what you saw before with Casa OS with everything laid out pretty similarly to what we've seen. Um, and some of the added features such as auto backup and remote access functionality, well, they're made more possible thanks to the inclusion of a client application. Uh, if you can install the client app for both Windows and Mac, Mac systems. And again, on mine, I can just head down here into uh, the ice icewell uh, section there you can see the client tool already running in there just nice and simply added there at the bottom as well and it ultimately allows you to access this it's built on zero tier or built at least in conjunction with zero tier so allow you to access the back the dashboard peer drop something we'll talk about later on adding up a backup folder locally in your system so if we go ahead and do that now we'll just arbitrarily pick uh, sound recordings there and synchronize that with somewhere on the destination NAS system so again we can go and create a brand new folder or just go straight into data backup if we choose click start and that's it now we're got this backup and this synchronization between a local folder here on my um, local system and here on the uh, Zimmer OS NAS here as you can see we're running that background uh, synchronized drop uh, synchronization and backup between the NAS and that folder as we speak now again Things that are missing, the Thunderbolt optimization, I'm not so bothered about not being available right now because this is still the N100 version, even if it is the V2 board, Thunderbolt wasn't an option here. But some of the unified cloud storage management, so remote overview management interests me. The chat GPT stuff, there is an audience for it, of course, and we'll be talking more about that, no doubt, in the next 12 months as many other different NAS software and hardware providers start rolling in AI-supported file management. But the one that really kicked me in the bum was RAID support. I'm kind of disappointed RAID support hasn't been prioritized right now, particularly on this system that's rocking out the gate with six storage bays and potentially between four and six M.2 NVMe base if you include the ones on that uh, motherboard there. Now, the storage manager remains largely the same. Obviously, now there is more storage capabilities and drives that have had to scale things up. But when you look at Casa OS and Zimmer OS, we've got our list of drives there. We've got our available storage there, and I've started combining some of that storage. For example, we've got a couple of spare drives down here. If we uh, go into the merge section here, we can go ahead and start merging some of these drives together to enhance that. So at the moment, I've merged these two 9TB or 10TB drives uh, really together, and that's how we We've merged them together with the primary and we can if we choose to disallow and remove those if we choose and there are other merge storage means uh, with open media vault um integration there and the building of the way all that storage is sort of binded together 
but that's really it if we for example wanted to add a storage drive to here oh, we can go ahead and merge that together and that will merge but it will also obviously format that data that comes before it uh, but what i will say you may notice when we combined those two uh, nine tb drives in the existing one tb We've got R307, there was no option, and there still isn't, from what I can see, any option natively to create a standard RAID pool. And as you can see, that's why I'm so gutted that RAID support still sits there in the background waiting to be done. Because I think that's really, really important. Because any kind of performance measures we do down the line, RAID is going to play an enormous factor in that. Same goes with redundancy. Uh, another thing I'll highlight... I'm kind of surprised terminal access isn't available immediately here out the gate. From what I could see, if this is anything like CASA was, some of the earlier testing, I don't quite know the default state of play. And we're not going to judge the beta on this, by the way, but what the default state of play is going to be on SSH uh, being enabled or disabled. From what I could see, there was no toggle, uh, and therefore... I would suggest that SSH is probably on, as was the case with early Casper OS. Now, digging in, we could probably disable that. And indeed, if we go in via certain containers or if we go in via something like Putty or Windows PowerShell, we could probably go in, tap in SSH style that way, and then disable and enable and configure things accordingly. But a lot of those uh, ease of use... Uh, and quality of life improvements to access those sort of configurations and controls in the GUI aren't present right now. There is no main overarching settings menu, something we've found in all the other OSs that we've dealt with before. Indeed, what you see here is pretty much it. At the top, we've got our ability to log in and out. At the top left, we've got the option here, you know, managing updates, getting the tips on screen, news and feeds, USB auto mount, yes or no. Changing that web port there for the remote access again, integrating in the zero tier stuff in order to do so to access to go in. So at the moment, I'm accessing locally, but of course, we could have been using remote access protocols there as the backup folder runs there in the background. The settings are there, and you know, the options for configurations are there, but even that search bar, it's not like we can. Um, you know go into terminal there because at the moment i've set it to google if we we don't even get shortcut options there for example if we wanted to use plex you know i've installed plex that should hopefully be utilized for some internal searches maybe that's when i'll integrate the ai stuff but at the moment that's still not blowing me away and indeed there isn't really much of a native performance or resource monitor either obviously i've gone in and i'm utilizing net data like i do with a lot of these um container back-ended applications and services and you know it's running very well i can get huge amounts of information here if i choose i can dig down real deep into that cpu how much of the integrated graphics that i'm using i can dig in but that's still using a third party appliance there something i'm not overly keen in doing uh, if you know what i mean i kind of I think a good NAS OS should have a performance monitor and resource monitor built into the hub there. And I'm not really getting any of that. And this kind of uh, light top end stuff here, I know this is a beta. We can't be that hard about it. Casa S, you know, was originally designed for more compact, modest systems. But now we're moving into some big ground. I kind of want this software to be a little bit more feature rich. And I know it's early days and we're not judging this beta too hard. But still, nonetheless, I would like to have that there. These widgets are handy, but for me, a widget should be uh, a light managed top end for something bigger when I want to jump into it there. The storage manager has seen performance improvements in the way it's handling um, the data being migrated to those drives together. From what I could see, it was definitely quicker to do that on this, but how much of that improved um, or that reduced latency for the responses there comes down to the hardware rather than software optimization, I can't really confirm. The App Center hasn't seen, you know, the repository it's pulling from there. There's no real changes. All the standard apps and services we've seen in Casar OS before it are here, as well as obviously the ability to add other container uh, repositories as well, or even just your own default one. Um, if we go into Plex Media Server, for example, here, you know, it's running exactly how I'd like it. I've got it already, you know, sort of indexed all of the main folders that I would have liked to have seen it use. Again, I'm not going to go for any licensed media because of YouTube. If I go, for example, into my 1080p and 4K test files here, we can go for something, you know, let's go for, say, an HEVC 10-bit uh, 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 1080p here. We have that running, running absolutely fine straight away. We can skip back and forth. It should be playing natively, which it is. And if we snap that over there, 
bring in our Plex performance monitor there. This is exactly the same NAS. We're able to see very little hit then. We can sort of scale things up there, maybe go something a little heavier, shall we? So 30, so a uh, great deal more than that. Again, we're sticking with the HEVC media, and I know I'm accessing via the web browser, and therefore performance would probably be a little bit better if we were using a client application for Windows or streaming it from a TV. But still, nonetheless, you can, I'll ignore that activity monitor there at the top. It's running absolutely fine there. And again, we will be doing much more fully fledged and deeper Plex performance testing later on. I'm just showing you right there that the hardware is at least still accessing that. And if we go into the general settings, you're able to see that we were putting on make CPU hurt there. Although we can't access the transcoding engine or the details there without tapping in with SSH and get more information about that. Um, but overall, I'm looking forward to doing the Plex Media Server testing on that. Hopefully, uh, a more detailed breakdown of that will come in the next week or so. Um, moving forward from that, we can go into the file manager there because I'll be straight with you. I like the file manager on this. I really, really do like the file manager because although I do have complaints about this platform currently and that RAID support not being pushed in importance more than anything else for a system of this scale i will highlight that i think the file manager here is not only very user friendly and you know how much of this is borrowed from existing assets who knows but i would say it's incredibly intuitive and user friendly so left hand side there's our standard folder structure there if we want to we can create a folder lovely and easily if we want that folder to be a shared folder so it can be packed up, uh, picked up on the local area network or connected users we can do that there so if we call it new folder two boom we've made that folder shared it's as simple as that new folder two everything there is created as we see it on the bottom there we've got location so at the moment we've got that internal drive already created for us there on top of that we've got um localized storage via a local connected drives and i've even gone ahead and connected a remote access uh drive via google the google drive synchronization unsurprisingly there we've got all the files and folders from that drive there and again all synchronized to the system it's just worth bearing in mind when that's happening that you are still going to be streaming those files these aren't a local pinned version this is merely a bolted on remote storage then indeed if we go into uh, the media folder there that's where all of our data from the plex media server is going to be pulling from we can make our way into those files there and still play them natively if we choose but they're not going to be anywhere near as smooth in terms of playback because they would be accessing it via a dedicated playback manager so for example into the cave of wonders here we played this file and it will play within the file manager here but but there's still certainly a lack of some of the optimization that I would have liked to have seen. And almost certainly this is something we're going to be seeing down the line um, as this OS reaches the finish line and becomes a full version. This is still a beta. But as you can see, trying to play this file, again, H.264, Cave of Wonders 4K file. We're not really getting anything from it here. Whereas in Plex, if we wanted to, we would go into those 4K trailers, into the Cave of Wonders, play that file, and it will play that file lovely and quickly. That's what I mean about some of the optimization that kind of needs to be done here in the background um, of that software for things before it really gets over the finishing line for a lot of this stuff. But one of the other features I really, really like that for an early version of file management here, and bear in mind, you know, your Unraid, your um, TrueNAS, neither of those platforms have native file managers unless you want to go to TrueNAS scale and install a file manager or go into Unraid and do likewise install a file manager. At least this has got this rolled in. Uh, from there, go into Peerdrop, and Peerdrop's a lovely little feature that when you uh, install uh, different devices with that Zimmer application, as well as access the NAS locally, it allows you to drop files. So, for example, Windows Chrome here, we're using this device. I can choose to send a file to another system here. So, here's a thumbnail from a video I was working on, and boom, I can now send a file to that other user down there for peer dropping between those two devices. And the same goes from my local system here, I can choose to use that and peer drop to other devices in that local area network, just get them to install the relevant client to their devices. And that allows files to be exchanged between these platforms and the NAS system. This isn't a new thing, but I'm glad that's been integrated into this. It's a very um, kind of user-friendly centric uh, system that I think a lot of users are going to enjoy using. And again, you can add different client devices and more as you go, as well as get those clients. Um, as I say, the overview uh, here, it's a good enough, file manager for me it's a good baseline one on the right hand side we've got more information about the individual storage areas we've created um, more recent files that have been accessed and adding further connections 
with other clouds. Uh, I imagine they'll add more cloud supported platforms on there, not just you know the three that you've got, maybe some better ones out there, um, as well as accessing local storage over the likes of USB or other directories and LAN storage such as other NASes, perhaps with our sync or RTRR um, or our sync between them to add them via their uh, standard identities. But again, not much different there, but still nice to see. Ultimately, if we come out of that one, it is only small breadcrumb differences over that of Casa OS from what I can see here, but at the same time, some of those integrated differences are a little bit more prominent than they were on Casa. A little security ones, such as the two-factor authentication being recommended very early doors as an application to choose to use, and indeed that way the storage is being portrayed to you. But still, nonetheless, these are still small steps over what Casa OS was before, and I'm still not confident enough to use this as my baseline measurement here for when we look at Zimmer Cube and its real performance, its real power consumption, its real capabilities when this is so clearly um, a beta OS right now. Okay, so we've got the device set up here on the table. We've gone for a distance of 60 centimeters between the microphone and the device, so you are going to be hearing. I'm going to leave this running for about two to three minutes. We're going to go for the initial boot noise there. Normally it takes about a minute for this system to boot, but I've not noticed any major differences on this prototype in terms of the fan utilization during that time. Also, you can see a decibel meter there on screen. That decibel meter, of course, is going to give us some indication. You can see me talking right now. Again, I'm about a foot away from this mic so that's going into there so you can see the general noise of me talking there in the background again i'm not sure about this whole mosquito uh, library set in there well, it's telling us there in terms of general ambient but hopefully this will give you some indication relative to the noise you're going to get when the system is on uh, the other thing i'm going to add is this new motherboard that we've got the version 2 there doesn't have the power button on so i will need to push utilizing this inside so just ignore that but what i'm going to do is boot this device up and then just give three minutes of uninterrupted noise of this let's go ahead
so you know not the quietest i will say right now um those fans i think could stand to be a little bit more adjustable there's no setting in casa os to configure a lot of those if i was in close proximity with it like this if i was a foot or two feet away banging away editing this on a direct cable that's quite a consistent noise that i would have to get around with headphones um Again, this light here flashing, I'm not entirely certain what is going on with that light constantly flashing there. A lot of the LED control. Again, if we get into uh, that front panel there, we're able to see the individual LEDs for each of those drives. Again, I really do not like this front panel. As you can see there, with the drives that we are running inside, all of those individual LEDs indicating both all of those. And again, I'd say this is not the quietest NAS. Uh, we can definitely hear the fan inside spinning up. A lot of that is a combination of that CPU fan making a lot of that noise. The rear fans can probably be swapped out with quieter fans. Um, but again, I don't think that's something Zimmer are going to include in this. But let's move forward. But there you go, that's the state of play on the Zimmer Cube so far. At the time of recording this, their crowdfunding hasn't finished. It's still going on on Kickstarter. I don't think any of that early bird stuff knocking around anymore, but you can go and go to the link in the description and find out. Ultimately, I like where this product is going. I think it's good that, at the very least, I do think this is a legit, real, physical product. Hopefully, it makes it into fulfillment. We'll have to wait and see. And, of course, I will update you with more on this later next year. Um, I will also say I will be doing Plex performance testing on this. I know I mentioned this early in the video, but just to confirm, because that is a third party app, I think that's fine. And I may go ahead and stick Unraid and or TrueNAS on this and get some benchmarks on this. I won't hold those results, good or bad, against this directly. I don't think that's especially fair, but I will try to find a little bit of time in December 2023 to run those tests on this system and let you know how that goes. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Links in the description to the full ever rolling mega thread on this. Links to their crowdfunding are also down there as well with new updates and of course if you need help choosing the right story solution for you use the free advice section over on NAS Compares uh, on the right hand side of every page our discord or our r.nas compares community forum or use our patreon or ko-fi pages there for expediate support access our membership tiers where you can see these videos early and our monthly zooms and seminars as well as some options in that uh, on those pages in order to hire myself as a consultant for your own storage needs but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time